Hi, I'm Tony Guerra. I teach college pharmacology and I created the free pharmacology course podcast to help you recognize, understand, and memorize pharmacology and drug names on the go. This first seven lecture series provides a basic understanding of how to recognize common drug names, understand the basic classifications, and quickly memorize them for exams. The print ebook and audio books these lectures are based on, Memorizing Pharmacology, a relaxed approach, can be found in the show notes taking you to audible.com. If you've never had a book from Audible, you may be able to get the seven hour professional narrated version for free. Please do take the time to subscribe, rate, and review these episodes. It helps other people find out about them. Welcome to episode seven Endocrine Pharmacology. Let's start with chapter seven Endocrine. This is our last chapter, uh, and we're going to start with three OTC medications. Most people don't know that insulins are over-the-counter because they aren't literally over-the-counter. They're in the refrigerator in the pharmacy, but they don't require a prescription, or two of them don't. Uh, regular insulin, which is Humulin R, and NPH insulin, which is Humulin N. And alphabetically, you say that, well, why didn't you put the N first? Why did you put uh, the R first? Traditionally, insulins, when we talk about them and list them, we list them in the order of the speed that they work. Uh, so I'll mention these in the insulin column, but regular insulin um, works for less time uh, than NPH insulin. So uh, that's how we would uh, put it regular than NPH. Uh, emergency contraception. So the stem here is the gest that lets you know it's a progestin. Uh, so levonorgestrel uh, is plan B one step. Why is it called one step? Well, it used to be two steps, used to be two pills. And uh, the plan B comes from, well, plan A might have been a condom or something like that that broke, and uh, plan B uh, was to take this pill uh, for emergency contraception. Uh, it used to be by prescription, then it went behind the counter, then um, recently it's gone over the counter uh, and available readily. Uh, so let's go with uh, the prescription medications now. So we'll start with the uh, oral antidiabetics. And to remind us that diabetes is an issue of a, a blood glucose that's elevated. So what we're trying to do is reduce that blood glucose. Uh, the order that I put them in is by alphabetically by their class so that if you have other medications you want to put in, you can just put in more biguanides or more DPP-4 inhibitors. Uh, but the B precedes the D, precedes the sulfonylurea. Uh, so metformin has the formin stem, F-O-R-M-I-N. Uh, but you'll usually see some kind of GL in these generic names, and metformin's the exception. Um, so the manufacturer made glucophage. The GL is in the gluco for glucose. And then phage, to phage something is to eat it. So if you've heard of cell eating is phagocytosis, cell drinking is pinocytosis. So that's kind of where that comes from. Uh, the DPP-4 inhibitor, citagliptin. So some people just call them gliptins because it's just hard to say DPP-4. Um, and that's Genuvia. So the second generation sulfonylurea is glipizide. Uh, and we have the GLI uh, prefix. It's brand name Glucotrol, so you can see glucose control is what I think they were going for with the brand name. And then Gliburide, the GLY prefix, uh, and Diabeta is the brand name. So you can see most of the word diabetes is in there, or you can think of the beta cells uh, and insulin secretion and what they do there in the islets of Langerhans. Uh, so those are if you have a patient that has too much um, blood sugar. Uh, however, sometimes we have a condition of hypoglycemia and you would use glucagon when the glucose is gone is the best way I think to think of that and that brand name is glucagen. Okay, so we are generating uh, glucose where there isn't any. Okay. So let's go on to the insulins and another uh, situation where we have too much or too little of a hormone. So I've put the insulins here in order of uh, how long they work. So insulin lyse pro works very quickly, uh, should be taken with a meal, and because it works so quickly, uh, it's by prescription. 
and the brand name is Humalog, which is a combination of human insulin and analog uh, insulin. Um, the regular insulin and NPH I already talked about, but this is where they would be placed if you were to put the four insulins together in terms of how long they work. So insulin Lyspro, regular insulin, NPH insulin, then insulin Glargine. Uh, I've heard Lazy Lantus to remind you that it's very slow acting. It works uh, all day. Uh, and then Tugio is a, a newer brand name. But uh, those four insulins uh, in that order. Uh, just as diabetes was an issue with high glucose and sometimes we get hypoglycemic, uh, hypothyroidism is simply adding thyroid if you want to treat that. So levothyroxine is the actual hormone and the brand name comes from Synthroid which is synthetic thyroid uh, is how they came up with that brand I believe. And then hyperthyroidism when we have too much thyroid hormone uh, we would use something like propylthiouracil which is uses the P, the T, and the U from propylthiouracil to make PTU. Uh, hormone replacement, uh, so testosterone, the STER uh, is the stem indicating it's a steroid, and then andro uh, meaning man, and then gel uh, because testosterone is generally uh, regarded as a male hormone. So from there let's go on to uh, some uh, birth control and uh, issues with the bladder. So beginning with the combined oral contraceptives, or the pill as most people would call it, uh, the ESTR is an estrogen, and then the GEST again is a progestin. And these get really complicated, but if you want to look at the estrogens, you see that in all four of these, ethanyl estradiol is the estrogen, so we don't have to change anything there. What we're doing is we're either adding a supplement or uh, we're adding a progestin. So the first one is norethandrone, ethanol estradiol, and ferrous fumarate, which makes loestrin 24, and then we use the FE, the abbreviation from the periodic table of elements, uh, for iron. Okay. Norgestimate with ethanol estradiol is trisprintec. The tri comes from it that it's triphasic. And those are oral contraceptives. So if we're trying to remember something, again, we try to go head to toe. And the patch would probably be something you put on the belly. And norogestromin, the just for the progestin, with ethanol estradiol, is orthoevra. So uh, that patch you can put on your belly. Uh, the ring is a vaginal ring, so we're going further down. Edonogestrel and ethanol estradiol. Again, we're using those stems. And the brand name, I think, comes from New Vaginal Ring, where they just took the NU from and make the sound new, the VA from vaginal, and then ring. Okay. Um, while the tablets or the pill, we have, you know, seven, 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 and then usually off uh, for a week for a 28-day cycle. These, the patch and the ring, are used for seven days uh, and then um, a new one replaces it. Uh, overactive bladder, uh, so some of these brand names actually uh, help quite a bit. Uh, so with oxybutynin, uh, the detrusor muscle is an issue uh, with overactive bladder, so ditropan uh, alludes to the detrusor muscle, and then that TROL from control you could think of urine control with Oxytrol OTC. The fenacin in solafenacin um, is the stem and vesicare, um, vesica actually means bladder in Latin uh, and somebody must have been a classics major that uh, helped make this brand name. Uh, but vesicare is care for the bladder. Uh, and then tolteridine, again detrusor muscle control uh, in the brand name. Uh, urinary retention, so we've talked about a little bit about cholinergic versus anticholinergic and a side effect of anticholinergics is that everything's dry. 
so there's anhydrosis, uh, stop sweating, um, there's uh, blurry vision secondary to dry eyes, there's dry mouth, uh, there's urinary retention, uh, there's constipation, and then tachycardia. But that urinary retention uh, is what would normally uh, cause this kind of state. So to treat an anticholinergic state, what we would do is we would give a cholinergic. So ethanic call, C-H-O-L, and that's not actually a stem, so I'll erase it, uh, is a cholinergic medication. And you can see the part of acetylcholine uh, that's in the brand name. But again, that's not a stem. Uh, I just wanted to point it out. Uh, erectile dysfunction. Uh, so these have the uphill stem, and I believe there's actually an infix in here because there's a vardenafil and a sildenafil, and those have that same den in there, but I won't mess with that right now. So sildenafil is Viagra. It's the first that came out. Uh, it's prominently uh, talked about in Love and Other Drugs, uh, a recent movie. Um, and via means uh, life. And GR are the first two words in growth, so give life, growth, however you want to uh, take that for erectile dysfunction. Uh, Tadalafil uh, is also an erectile dysfunction medication with a much longer half-life, so they call it the weekend pill. This is the one where the, the couple's there with the bathtubs next to each other at sunset. Um, I can't mention the mnemonic, really. Uh, my students used uh, something to the effect of ta-da, but I'm not going to get into that. Okay. All right, so we just have four drugs left. Uh, we've done 196. Uh, so we're going to go on to the benign prostatic hyperplasia alpha blocker and then benign prostatic hyperplasia 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. So I mentioned that alpha blockers are used for hypertension, but they also are helpful uh, for a condition called benign prostatic hyperplasia, or BPH. And this is a benign growth of the prostate uh, where there's an issue with urine flow. So to make the brand name, the manufacturer must have thought of you know, the urine flow being slow, so now we're going to get maximum flow to make flow max. And then alfuzosin um, also alludes to this urine with the UR uh, and then control TRAL instead of T-R-O-L. Um, the osin at the end of tamsulosin and alfuzosin, it's not an actual stem, but some students use it uh, to remind themselves that the BPH uh, drugs are related. Uh, the last two drugs, so BPH, 5-alpha reductase inhibitors. Uh, so the dutasteride and finasteride. So Avidart is the brand name for dutasteride. Uh, finasteride is interesting in that it has two brand names, and I should have put Proscar first. Uh, for prostate care, because that really matches up with the Avidart. Uh, but interestingly enough, uh, as people were taking the finasteride, they were growing hair, something called hirsutism. And not to lose an opportunity, the manufacturer said, okay, well, let's um, create a medication uh, name that's going to indicate that the person has, is going to grow hair. So alopecia is the loss of hair. Propecia, I guess, would be um, adding hair. So uh, that's how that name came about. So at the end of movies, uh, or the old black and whites, there was always fin for fini or done. So we have finished um, our 200 medications. Support for this episode comes from the audiobook Memorizing Pharmacology, a relaxed approach. With over 9,000 sales in the United States, United Kingdom, and Australia, it's the go-to resource to ease the pharmacology challenge. Available on Audible, iTunes, and Amazon.com. In print, ebook, and audiobook.